When you hear the word bronze, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Maybe ancient statues, Olympic medals, old tools, or a gleaming decorative piece. Bronze is one of those materials that feels both ancient and familiar, something we use today, yet instantly associate with early human civilization. But have you ever wondered, why is it actually called bronze? Where did the name come from? And how did this alloy become so important that an entire era of human history was named after it? In today's video, we're diving deep into the origins of the word bronze, its surprising linguistic journey, how the alloy came to define technological progress, and why humans chose to give it such a distinct and lasting name. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. Before we explore the name, let's quickly talk about what bronze actually is. Bronze is a metal alloy, usually made by combining copper with tin. The fascinating part is that the specific ratio can change depending on what the bronze is used for. Add more tin, and the bronze becomes harder. Add some other elements like lead or phosphorus, and it takes on different properties, better casting ability, improved strength, or enhanced wear resistance. But here's the thing, bronze doesn't occur naturally. It always has to be man-made. Early humans had to discover not just copper, but tin as well, and then figure out how to melt them together in the right proportions. That's already a massive technological leap. And that leap happened so early in human history that the Bronze Age emerged in several civilizations independently. So from its early days, bronze was not just a material, it was a symbol of human innovation. Now let's talk about the name itself, because the origin of the word bronze is surprisingly complex. The English word comes from the French word bronze, which itself was borrowed from Italian. In Italian, the word is bronzo, but it doesn't stop there. Many linguists believe that bronzo traces its roots to the Persian word burinj or berenj, which means copper or brass. Even earlier, there might have been roots in older Middle Eastern languages connected to copper alloys in general. There's also a possible link to Sanskrit terms meaning yellowish metals, tying it further to the cultural significance of copper-based alloys across ancient civilizations. What makes this even more fascinating is the bronze itself spread across different cultures long before the word did. People were using bronze thousands of years before anyone in Europe used a word that sounded like bronze. The alloy existed first, the word came much later. So why did this particular name become the one that survived and carried over into English? The answer is a mix of trade, culture, and influence. During the Renaissance, Italy was one of the centers of metalworking, sculpture, and artistic revival. Italian bronze statues, like those crafted by Donatello, or later by other Renaissance artists, were admired across Europe. The Italian word bronzo naturally traveled with those artworks, spreading into French, then into English. But the reason it stuck wasn't just artistic influence. Bronze had already been such a major part of European history that a strong, distinctive word was needed to describe it. And culturally, Europeans were already familiar with bronze's unique color, durability, and prestige, so the borrowed name fit perfectly. Now let's step back and think about the role bronze played in shaping civilization. We often hear about the Bronze Age, but what does that really mean? Around 3300 BCE, humans reached a point where they could produce bronze tools reliably, and this transformed everything, farming, warfare, trade, construction, and art. Bronze tools were harder and more durable than pure copper tools. Bronze weapons could hold sharper edges. Bronze allowed the creation of more intricate objects and more stable structures. 
It changed economies and fueled cultural exchange because tin deposits were rare, forcing trade between regions. In a sense, bronze connected early civilizations long before global trade existed. And because bronze became associated with technological advancement, the material naturally carried a kind of prestige. It wasn't just a metal, it was a sign of progress. No wonder we still use the word today in medals and awards. Bronze still symbolizes achievement and craftsmanship. As centuries passed, the word bronze took on meanings beyond the metal itself. For example, we use bronze to refer to a particular color, a warm, brownish metallic tone. We use it metaphorically, describing someone's skin as bronzed after sun exposure. The word also gets used symbolically in sports, where a bronze medal means third place. While silver and gold outrank it in competition, bronze still represents excellence. The evolution of the word shows how deeply it embedded itself into human culture. From a simple alloy of copper and tin, it became a color, a verb, a symbol, a category in art, and a reference point in everyday language. Here's something interesting. The word bronze is relatively new compared to how ancient bronze itself is. Humans first created bronze more than 5,000 years ago, but the English word bronze only appeared around the 1600s. So for most of human history, the people who used bronze didn't call it by that name. They simply used terms for copper or metals in general. The name we use today is actually a linguistic descendant of cultural exchange, artistic influence, and centuries of borrowed vocabulary. It's a reminder of how language evolves just like technology does. So why is it called bronze? Because over thousands of years, as this man-made alloy spread across continents and civilizations, the word that eventually traveled with Renaissance art and European craftsmanship became the one that stuck. It's a name shaped by language, culture, and trade but the metal itself is shaped by fire, ingenuity, and human curiosity. Bronze earned its name not just through etymology, but through the impact it had on history. And even today, whether in statues, instruments, metals, or mechanical components, bronze continues to hold that same ancient prestige. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.